Did you see the bench come in? Annie Treme and I met at um, Pema Children's uh, workshops up at the Omega Center. But we've never really talked, and I've always wanted to have a longer conversation. She always has you in silence up there. You can't. Talk. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. You get up there, and immediately she says, "No talking." <laughs> Gateway to the Himalayan order. Museums in general, I find to be intimidating. And here, I do get a little intimidated because everything is so foreign to me that I'm not sure how to react. Really old stuff. Well, I think by the end of this session, you'll be able to speak to many things in this museum, because that's what a visit to a museum should be able to do. It should be able to address the hard questions without fear. Every image has a significance and a story. So this is actually a really good representation here of a Bodhisattva. And you see you've got some rather unusual indentations here, yeah. which we think are actually bullet holes. So chances are quite good that this Bodhisattva was used as target practice. You know, a Bodhisattva. Well, actually, I mean, tell us what, a, what do you think a Bodhisattva is? A uh, Bodhisattva is somebody who first interest is in helping others. Compassion is a hard thing to really understand. You know, when we feel sorry for somebody, that's not what we talk about as compassion. Well, what is compassion? It's actually heartfelt concern. Uh, everybody we meet has a burden. Mm -hmm. So by understanding that, you're able to be more kindly toward them. Everybody has a burden, you know. Right. Yours is not bigger than mine, or Tim's is not bigger than, well, it's taller, but I'm bigger. <laughs> I can distribute the burden a little. Uh, well, I, you know, the, his story, and, and again, Steve, every painting is a little bit of a movie, and this right. storyboard explains how Avalod Keshvara was a bodhisattva. He was trying to help everybody reach Nirvana. Think of him trying to sort of herd all these um, hundreds of people, oh no, wait, there are thousands of people, oh no, wait, there are millions of people, ah, I'm losing my mind. And in fact, he had a, a basically a Buddhist version of a nervous breakdown. His head exploded and <laughs> broke true. into 11 shards, and his arms also shattered into 100 pieces because he just couldn't cope. And the Amitabha Buddha um, saw his predicament and decided to help him by creating a new face out of each shard of his head. And so here, while you have the original head, you also have mounting on top 11 other heads, all facing the different directions, so that he could better see the suffering around him. Tim, thank you so much. You're welcome. I Appreciate hope that was helpful. That was great. I hope you can use two seconds of it. Yes. <laughs> oh, you have a park but bench. We can all, yes, we brought in a park bench. Oh, that's a great site for it. You know, I've been practicing for 40 years, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, when uh, Tim was explaining about uh, the statues and so forth, mm -hmm. um, I think maybe 10, 12 years ago, I kind of my attention started to go away from that sort of thing and go to just what am I doing with my life? And mm -hmm. what is everybody else doing with their life? Buddhism has become, uh, of course, it's infiltrated with Christianity, so we think we have to do something good. Right. And that's how we see the, the word compassion as doing good deeds, which it is. Uh, but it's also a true, heartfelt giving. You know, not something we think we should do, but something we feel mm -hmm. in other people that we're actually willing. But when you begin, you can get very aggressive with compassion. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Let me help you. Let, let, 
I this you listen to me, I help you. <laughs> right. But anyway. Uh, but you also talk about um, kindness um, mm -hmm. as being very important. Uh, not just kindness to others, but kindness to yourself. Well, it's easy to be kind to other people. And it's it been is? A, the, yeah, well, <laughs> for some, some okay. it is. <laughs> uh, and it's easy to be kind to those people you love. It's not also me. easy to be very, uh, to be awful to the ones you love, too. Yeah, for sure. In fact, sure. that's yeah. sometimes when I find it the hardest to be kind. <laughs> but go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I think if you take all the teachings of the Buddha and you boil them down and find out what the Buddha's really saying, first of all, his first noble truth was there is dukkha sometimes uh, translated as life is suffering, which is not at all what he said. He said there's dukkha. Dukkha means uh, some sort of dissatisfaction or um, something like that. So, uh, and, but he said there's a cause. There's always a cause for this dukkha. So we try to approach the, uh, the reason for, for our suffering so much. Right. It's because we're not kind to ourselves as I said, let me go back. For most of us, it's easier to be kind to others than it is to be kind to ourselves. Kindness to ourselves, and I'm going to back and say that again, it's just having the attitude of, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, because we, we find argument with just about everything. Oh, get me that way. So when you say, so that's okay, so like if I get uh, anxious, or angry. I get angry. Anger doesn't stop. Right. But you can stop acting on your anger, whether it's toward yourself or right. toward your loved ones or toward the guy across the street. I want to ask you a very specific question about meditation. Um, I try and do it every day. But here's what happens to me sometimes is that um, I start, you know, I mean, thinking. I mean, you can't stop your thoughts. No, that's not the idea at all. But I also get. Um, especially if I'm doing something like this, where I'm in the middle of doing this show, and I, I get ideas, I get creative. You know, once I finally stop and then, you know, sit, all these creative ideas come. And all of a sudden, it's like uh, the, timer, the timer goes off, and I'm like, mm. oh, I don't think I was meditating. <laughs> yes, you um, were. Was I? Yes, you were. Yeah? Yeah, well, the idea of meditation is to recognize our thoughts, not to right. change our thoughts, but just to recognize how we think. After a while, you actually begin to settle down a little bit. Your mind mm -hmm. begins to slow down. Mm -hmm. And you begin to realize all that we are is a result of our thoughts, founded on our thoughts, made up with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make our world. I mean, it's not that this is all an illusion. Where is it? Well, they say it's a dream. It's a dream. Buddhism says we live in a dream. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in our imagination. It blows your mind to realize that uh, there is no reality beyond our conscious mind. Everything else is a dream. See, so we're dreaming. See, you're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it back. <laughs> no, Skip okay. it. Wipe that. <laughs> no, no, no. The first time I ever sat for a long time was just one day. After I settled down to realize I was going to meditate all day, I began to look over there. And so I didn't like that person, so I spent some time hating them. And then I saw something, oh, and I got attracted to that one over there. So I fell in love and had a little fantasy about that. And at the end of the day, I realized I've been through all those things with all those people, and all I was doing was sitting on my cushion. When we begin to see how we fantasize and make it so real, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. You can have great dramas and you know, right. all kinds of things. And, right. uh, you just watch that arise. Then you always have an object of meditation. That is something to bring your mind back to. It's simply your breath. And I want to uh, reply to what you said. I try to meditate. Uh, what was that guy at the bottom of the ocean, Yoda? Was Yoda was down in the ocean when the, anyway, Yoda. Yoda. It would find out who Yoda is. Okay. He said, no try, just do. Yes, okay. <laughs> just do, yes, yes. So when we try to meditate, that means that we're going in with an idea of something right. we're going to do. Right. So my shortest meditation instruction is 
sit down, be quiet, and see what happens. So whether you do it for three minutes or three hours, it's constantly watching and feeling what's arising. Mm -hmm. Come back to your meditation object, which is, if I neglected to mention that, is your breath. Mm -hmm. To this moment, maybe you bring it back to the pain in your leg or the pain in your back or whatever. Just bring it back to the what's happening right now. I did think about interviewing you in a bar. I can sit on a bar stool really well. <laughs>